All right, so today we're going to be going over a MacBook Air that is dead. Um, it would be really nice if I could continue my streak of luck from the previous video, but it would be really cool, but I doubt that. So I plug it in, I get a light on the charger, and it's dead, it doesn't turn on. So let's open it up and get an idea of what's wrong with it. Now, one thing to note with retinas and airs, even if it doesn't have a battery plugged in, the light will naturally turn orange. So on the older A1278s and A1286s and A1297s and everything else even before that, all those older models, the light only turns orange when it is charging a battery. Whereas in these machines, the light is not going to turn, it's not going to stay green if it's not charging a battery. So it'll turn green if the battery is completely full. But if you don't have a battery plugged in at all, it's still going to have an orange light. Don't ask me why Apple did that. I'm pretty sure they did that just to be assholes and to confuse the people that work on their products. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. But is what it is. That is what we deal with. Gotta love it. Let's move this light over so it makes more sense. Here we go. Now, let's... I'm gonna just use my little proprietary Penelope screwdriver to remove the proprietary little Penelope screws that nobody on earth but Apple uses. Thank you for being assholes. Uh, so we're just going to take those screws out. And Lewis, they're not being assholes. They just don't want people to strip them. Don't you know that Phillips is easily stripped? Yes. But is T3? No. And T3 is a standard that you can buy anywhere. Just being pricks for no reason. No reason at all. People wonder why I dislike them. All right, so I see nothing on the top of this board. So first thing I'm going to do is take the board out of the computer, and we go from there. Which means first thing to do is unplug the battery. I take every screw out besides the screw that holds the fan onto the board because I keep the fan plugged in because if I fix it and the fan spins, that means that usually I've... And I fixed it, so I like to keep the fan plugged in as my indicator as to whether I've made some progress. If I see the fan spinning, I've made progress. Even if I see the fan quarter spinning, I've made progress, but I really don't like when that happens. We just unplug all this junk. I keep a magnet on the end of my screwdriver. It makes it easy to just grab up all these screws very quickly. By the way, I'm pretty slow at this compared to the other people who work here, so if you have anybody at your store who is slower at taking these apart than me, please fire them, because I'm the benchmark for being slow. Righty. Cut out the interrupting phone call and keep it going. There's also a nice little screw to hold the heat sink down, which is hidden by the Wi-Fi wire. Thank you. Nice try. I'm not going to just... <laughs> nice try. My receptionist is ten times faster than me at this. She smokes me when it comes to putting this stuff back together and taking it apart. And that's it. The board is out. And let's just get the DC inboard out as well. And we'll start some measuring and try to figure out what's going on. And I also like to take a look. Before giving the board a cleaning, I like to give it a good look over so I can get a hint. Because this is, this is really the only hint that you're going to get. Once you ultrasonic it, your hints are usually gone. So I take the machine that I'm working on and I put it over here on the side desk. Now let's look, take a look at the board under the microscope camera and see if we can get an idea of what went on and where. Lots of dust. Sometimes there's water hiding by connectors. So let me know if you see banding. I think I fixed it, and by fixed it I mean I didn't do anything and it magically disappeared, so I'm taking credit for fixing it. But a lot of people said they were seeing tearing or banding or some fucked up looking stuff during these videos, and I think that I fixed it. By, again, by fixed, what I did is I just put my graphics card's fan on a higher speed. <laughs> and uh, this is... 
Also, it, I'm, I'm not using Windows 10 for recording anymore because it was stopping the recording in the middle constantly. Like Open Broadcaster and Windows 10 were not getting along at all. Aha! Uh -huh. See a little bit of green? That's my indication of liquid. Da ding So something happened there. Now let's see what the other side of the board in that area looks like. It's my only hint. And it leads nowhere. No. I don't care about the keyboard backlight circuit. I don't give a fuck. I want it to turn on. That circuit is worthless to me right now. It means nothing. Now, this really looks a lot better when it's not doing the banding shit and the tearing. It, before, it, was, it looked the same way that it looked when I tried to use VAAPI on Linux to use the Intel integrated graphics on my laptop to, you know, as hardware acceleration for video decoding. Oh my god, what a buggy pile of crap that was. Awful. Is that what I think it... Please tell me that's not a bug. Is this a bug? I'm not sure what that is, but I... I don't know what that is. I'm just kind of glad that I got gloves on. Like, what the, what the fuck is this? Like, this is kind of like... It's, it's black eye is on the left. It's right eye, but black eye is on the right. This is kind of like it's antennae. That's like it's separate antennae. Like, one there, one there. That's kind of like it's legs, one, two, three. Ugh. For all I know, it's just a piece of dirt, but I get so many computers with bugs that it's really hard to tell. So let's see if it turns on when everything else in the machine is disconnected. That would be hope number one. That would be really cool. So I plugged it in. I get a light, and the fan is spinning. Well, there you go. It's going to turn on, off, on, off, on, off, because that's what these airs do. So now I have to figure out which liquid damaged part of the computer is keeping it from turning on. Because this is very often the case. Very often, you know, something got liquid damaged inside the machine. And it's not the board. So let's see what that is. So I'm going to start plugging all of this stuff back in until I find the component that is actually causing it to not turn on. And if it does wind up turning on after I plug everything back in, then, I mean, I really couldn't ask for a better day. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, again, you get, you get blamed all day long for breaking shit that you never touched. Like, if you're a mechanic or an electronics person or whatever, anything, you get blamed all the time, like I said in the last video, for breaking shit that you never touched. Again, I installed LibreOffice onto a fucking computer a few years ago, and they blamed me for their graphics chip time. And I did it for a tip. I didn't ask for money. They wanted to, they wanted to sue me. It's insane. So it's just one of the, you know, man, you get blamed all the time for breaking shit, but does that, you know, that's one of the, this is one of those things here. Like, if I am supposed to get blamed for all the things that I break that I never touched, that I supposedly broke that I never touched, does that mean that I get to take credit for fixing shit that I never fixed? It's a paradox. I don't know. You tell me in the comments. What do you think? If... If it's okay to blame people for breaking things they never broke, is it okay to take credit for fixing shit that you never fixed? For me, it's kind of hard to do that. Because uh, here's the thing, like, karmatically speaking, it's gonna, I, I always kind of feel like it's going to come back to me. Like, um, I feel like if I, if, if I were to do that and say, yeah, look, I f I, that, that something's going to go wrong with that. Like, the, something is going to blow up the next day and ruin their data and whatever, and, and just out of karma for, for me. And then I'm going to get blamed for that. But man, this would be so cool if this actually worked. So I'm going to plug everything back in here into this machine that was completely dead, 100% dead. And we're going to start taking things off one by one. But I feel like that's just going to be a waste of time. I strongly believe that this is actually going to work perfectly fine. Just, just to screw with me just to make me feel like an idiot. So everything is now currently plugged back in, except the Wi-Fi and the battery. Let's get the Wi-Fi there, back in. Be careful when you're touching these Wi-Fi things, by the way, particularly with do-it-yourself messes. Um, so, so these Wi-Fi antennas and the webcam cable on the older machines, they break if you look at them the wrong way. Now, the issue here is it's kind of like hot potato if you're dealing with a do-it-yourself mess or you get something in the mail in a bag or a box, you know, with all the parts separate, is that it may have not actually been broken. 
but it's kind of like hot potato. It's not broken right now. It's hanging on by a strand, and it's just waiting for the next person to touch it. And once the next person touches it, even not, not even just like to, to pull it out, just to just like use the tweezers to, from the connector end to pull it, it's going to come apart, and you'll get blamed. So when you see that stuff, just don't touch it at all. So I'm going to plug it in. It's still dead. Good stuff. Okay, so I'm not losing my mind. I'm going to unplug the trackpad and the keyboard. Plug it in. Turns on. Okay, now let's see what the trackpad looks like. Keep in mind that the trackpad actually has... Um, it, it, I'm, I'm going into this later, but the trackpad actually does shoot out a couple of signals that are responsible for resetting the SMC. And that can happen if you have a liquid damage trackpad. Okay, so this is going to be different than the last video. I actually have to do some work. I know. The fucking injustice, right? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, you can't see any of that. Ew. 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 Yuck. Gross. Disgusting. So, let's go over a little bit of the theory as to why what's happening here is happening here by going over to the schematic. Let's open the schematic for this model motherboard. 820-3437. Here we go. And we're going to go over to where the trackpad is. Let's see. I think it's J4800 or something. Here we go. There you it. All right. So look at all this stuff. So let's see. SMC LSOC Reset L. So firstly, this talks to the SMC. Even if it's, and so it, is, it does have SMC communication. But the main one here, if SMC on off L is stuck low, what it's, this can actually uh, reset the SMC. So you know how you reset the SMC by pressing the power button for about three or five seconds and holding it down? If that signal is held down by corrosion, it's going to tell the SMC reset L signal to stay low. So the SMC is going to be in reset mode constantly. If you want to know more about how these uh, underscore L, what underscore L means, I do have a video on what underscore L means, and I believe I explained the SMC reset thing in that video. Now, look, also, SMC, LSOC, reset L, this also, this is another one. And this also comes from that trackpad keyboard connector. So if you have corrosion on here, if you have corrosion on here that's shorting any of these signals to ground or making voltage show up where it's not supposed to, you can indeed reset the SMC and can keep this thing from turning on just by the trackpad being bad. So do keep in mind, it's not always a board issue. It's not always a board issue. It can be something else. So just open your eyes, take a look at stuff. Don't get all hopeful and assume that it's always going to be a trackpad just because in this case it was a trackpad. But yeah, that's that for today. And hope you learned something.